Yashar Jasher 70. And in the third year from the birth of Moshe, Pharaoh was sitting at a banquet when Alparant, the queen, was sitting at his right and Batia at his left. And the lad, Moshe, was lying upon her bosom. And Bilam, the son of Beor, with his two sons, and all the princes of the kingdom were sitting at the table in the king's presence. And the lad stretched forth his hand upon the king's head and took the crown from the king's head and placed it on his own head. And when the king and princes saw the work which the boy had done, the king and princes were terrified and one man to his neighbor expressed astonishment. And the king said unto the princes who were before him at the table, What speak you and what say you, O ye princes, in this matter? And what is to be the judgment against the boy on account of this act? And Bil'am, the son of Beor, the magician answered before the king and princes, and he said, Remember now, O my lord and king, the dream which you did dream many days since, and that which your servant interpreted unto you. Now therefore, this is a child from the Ivri children, in whom is the Ruach Elohim. And let not my lord the king Imagine that this youngster did this thing without knowledge, for he is an Ivri boy, and wisdom and understanding are with him, although he is yet a child, and with wisdom has he done this, and chosen unto himself the kingdom of Mitzrayim. For this is the manner of all the Ivrim, to deceive kings and their nobles, to do all these things cunningly, in order to make the kings of the earth and their men tremble. Surely you know that Avraham, their father, acted thus, who deceived the army of Nimrod, king of Bebel, and Avimelech, king of Gerar, and that he possessed himself of the land of the children of Chet and all the kingdoms of Canaan, and that he descended into Mitzrayim and said of Sarah, his woman, she is my sister, in order to mislead Mitzrayim and her king. His son Yitzhak also did so when he went to Gerar and dwelt there. And his strength prevailed over the army of the, rather, of Avimelech, king of the Pelashitim. He also thought of making the kingdom of the Pelashitim stumble in saying that Rivka, his woman, was his sister. Yaakov also dealt treacherously with his brother and took from his hand his birthright and his blessing. He went then to Padan Aram, to the house of Lavan, his mother's brother, and cunningly obtained from him his daughter, his cattle, and all belonging to him, and fled away and returned to the land of Canaan, to his father. His sons sold their brother Yosef, who went down into Mitzrayim and became a slave and was placed in the prison house for twelve years until the former Pharaoh dreamed dreams and withdrew him from the prison house and magnified him above all the princes of Mitzrayim on account of his interpreting his dreams to him. And when Elohim caused a famine throughout the land, he sent for and brought his brother and all his brothers 
and the whole of his father's household and supported them without price or reward and bought the Mitzrim for slaves. Now therefore, my Lord King, behold, this child has risen up in their stead in Mitzrayim to do according to their deeds and to trifle with every king, prince, and judge. If it please the king, let us now spill his blood upon the ground, lest he grow up and take away the government from your hand, and the hope of Mitzrayim shall perish, rather, of Mitzrayim perish after he shall have reigned. And Balaam said to the king, Let us moreover call for all the judges of Mitzrayim and the wise men thereof, and let us know if the judgment of death is due to this boy as you did say, and then we will slay him. And Pharaoh sent and called for all the wise men of Mitzrayim, and they came before the king. And an angel of Yahuwah came amongst them, and he was like one of the wise men of Mitzrayim. And the king said to the wise men, Surely you have heard what this Ivri boy who is in the house has done, and thus has Balaam judged in the matter. Now judge you also, and see what is due to the boy for the act he has committed. And the angel, who seemed like one of the wise men of Pharaoh, answered and said as follows, before all the wise men of Mitzrayim, and before the king and the princes. If it please the king, let the king send for men who shall bring before him an onyx stone and a coal of fire and place them before the child. And if the child shall stretch forth his hand and take the onyx stone, then shall we know that with wisdom has the youth done all that he has done, and we must slay him. But if he stretch forth his hand upon the coal, then shall we know that it was not with knowledge that he did this thing, and he shall live. And the thing seemed good in the eyes of the king and the princes. So the king did according to the word of the angel of Yahuwah. And the king ordered the onyx stone and coal to be brought and placed before Moshe. And they placed the boy before them, and the lad endeavored to stretch forth his hand to the onyx stone. But the angel of Yahuwah took his hand and placed it upon the coal. And the coal became extinguished in his hand, and he lifted it up and put it into his mouth and burned part of his lips and part of his tongue. And he became heavy in mouth and tongue. And when the king and princes saw this, they knew that Moshe had not acted with wisdom in taking off the crown from the king's head. So the king and princes refrained from slaying the child, so Moshe remained in Pharaoh's house, growing up, and Yahuwah was with him. And while the boy was in the king's house, he was robed in purple, and he grew amongst the children of the king. And when Moshe grew up, in the king's house, Batia, the daughter of Pharaoh, considered him as a son, and all the household of Pharaoh honored him, and all the men of Mitzrayim were afraid of him. And he daily went forth and came into the land of Goshen, where his brethren, the children of Yashara'el, were. And Moshe saw them daily in shortness of breath and hard labor. And Moshe asked them, saying, 
Wherefore is this labor meted out unto you day by day? And they told him all that had befallen them and all the injunctions which Pharaoh had put upon them before his birth. And they told him all the counsels which Balaam, the son of Beor, had counseled against them, and what he had also counseled against him, in order to slay him when he had taken the king's crown from off his head. And when Moshe heard these things, his anger was kindled against Balaam, and he sought to kill him, and he was in ambush for him day by day. And Balaam was afraid of Moshe, and he and his two sons rose up and went forth from Mitzrayim, and they fled and delivered their souls and betook themselves to the land of Cush, to Kikianus, king of Cush. And Moshe was in the king's house, going out and coming in. Yahuwah gave him favor in the eyes of Pharaoh, and in the eyes of all his servants, and in the eyes of all the people of Mitzrayim. And they loved Moshe exceedingly. And the day arrived when Moshe went to Goshen to see his brethren, that he saw the children of Yashara'el in their burdens and hard labor. And Moshe was grieved on their account. And Moshe returned to Mitzrayim and came to the house of Pharaoh and came before the king. And Moshe bowed down before the king. And Moshe said unto Pharaoh, I pray you, my lord, I have come to seek a small request from you. Turn not away my face empty. And Pharaoh said unto him, Speak. And Moshe said unto Pharaoh, Let there be given unto your servants the children of Yashadael, who are in Goshen, one day to rest therein from their labor. And the king answered Moshe and said, Behold, I have lifted up your face in this thing to grant your request. And Pharaoh ordered a proclamation to be issued throughout Mitzrayim and Goshen, saying, to, to you, all the children of Yashar'el, thus says the king, For six days you shall do your work and labor, but on the seventh day you shall rest, and shall not perform any work. Thus shall you do all the days, as the king and Moshe the son of Batia have commanded. And Moshe rejoiced at this thing which the king had granted to him. And all the children of Yashara'el did as Moshe ordered them. For this thing was from Yahuwah to the children of Yashara'el. For Yahuwah had begun to remember the children of Yashara'el to save them for the sake of their fathers. And Yahuwah was with Moshe, and his fame went throughout Mitzrayim. And Moshe became great in the eyes of all the Mitzrim, and in the eyes of all the children of Yashar'el, seeking good for his people, Yashara'el, and speaking words of peace regarding them to the king.